Hey explorers, today we're making plastic, and not the synthetic kind you find in everyday items such as packaging, building materials, or consumer products. No, we are making plastic of our own using polymers from milk proteins. Plastics are a type of polymer which can be composed of chains of polymers which can be organic. Milk contains a protein called casein. Casein molecules can unfold and then link together to form long chains called polymers. This is how we'll make our plastic. For today's experiment, we'll need the following materials. Milk, paper towel, vinegar, mica powder, a heat-resistant bowl, a strainer, measuring cups and spoons, a mold, plus we'll need a saucepan and someone who can operate a stove because our first step is to heat up our milk. Let's head up to the kitchen and get that done. Heat one cup of milk on the stove until steaming hot, about 190 degrees Celsius, the same temperature you'd want for hot cocoa. Alternatively, you can microwave your milk for three minutes at half power. That'll work too. We're doubling our recipe, so we're gonna do two cups of milk. Now that we've heated our milk, we're gonna pour it into our heat resistant bowl. There we go, carefully doing that. Now, we're gonna add four tablespoons of vinegar. We're doubling our recipe, so we're gonna use a half cup. Then, you're gonna use a spoon just to stir your milk in the vinegar. Right away, the acid in the vinegar pulls out the milk protein casein monomers and becomes a chain of monomers, which is now our polymer. This technique is also used to make cheese, substituting the vinegar for lemon juice, which is also an acid. Now, we're gonna strain this into another bowl so we can separate the curds from the whey protein, which is the liquid. Try to get all that liquid out. This made quite a bit, which is nice. All right. If you want to use your whey protein liquid instead of discarding it, you can dehydrate it and turn it into a whey protein powder, which is great fuel for the body. Now that we've strained out the liquid, what we have left are our curds. What we're going to do is put those on a stack of paper towel, fold it all together, and squeeze out the remaining moisture. Depending on how much is left in your curds after you do that, you might have to repeat that process. Fun fact, milk plastic was used from the early 1900s to 1940s to make buttons, buckles, beads, fountain pens, and jewelry. Even Queen Mary of England was known to sport a couple pieces. Science! We've removed the moisture and our milk plastic is ready to take shape. We are going to use a series of molds that we found to make a bunch of little pieces. But the first thing we get to do is add color and make it unique. Express yourself! We're gonna add some mica powder, but first I need some gloves so I can mix it properly. I've chosen violet crystal for today's color. Okay, so I'm gonna get this ready. Oh, it is still very malleable. A Little bit of moisture in it, which is good. Okay, so add in our coloring. Then we're just gonna fold it in. Totally gonna need some more color in this. It's showing, but not as vibrantly as I want it to. So we'll add a little more. You're gonna take all of your curds and just mold them together into a ball of dough, which we can then press into our molds to take shape. You see, this is nice, but I want it to be really vibrant with the purple. There we go. You can also use food coloring, but I love the way the mica powder looks when you mix it into experiments. So there we go. We got a nice violet crystal ball of milk plastic ready to be shaped and dried out. Another home plastic you can try out is made with gelatin. So now our milk plastic is ready for our molds. Okay, so we'll put a little bit of our polymer into each of the molds and we'll flatten it in. These will give our milk plastic 
their shape. I am very glad I'm wearing gloves. This does not smell pleasant at all. All right, I'm just making sure our molds are properly filled, not overly filled. All right, our plastic is in the molds. So now for best results, we're gonna leave it set for 48 hours, two whole days. See you then explorers. It's been two days, which means it's time to break our plastic out of the mold and see how it turned out. Now I did check these over the 48 hours and saw that they cured pretty quickly, but keep in mind that if you have a larger mold, it's gonna take a little bit longer for your plastic to become hard. Oh, oh, let's just see how all these turned out. These are just popping right out of the mold, which is great. They did shrink a little bit, so don't be afraid to overfill your mold, but try to keep the back smooth. That way you get a nice flat surface. All of our shapes just coming straight out, little peanut butter cups and food, all sorts of things. They did take the shapes of the molds really well, which is great to see. The good news is that the smell's gone because these uh, did not smell very pleasant while we were making everything. I am noticing there's a little bit of slime on a couple of them, so it might have been good to take out a little bit more of the moisture before putting them in the mold. But otherwise, yeah, these are these are quite great. Just nice little like charms you can make, and I can see this being a very versatile little project for at home. Oop. They do break. But uh, yeah, they are pretty sturdy otherwise. Like this still takes quite a bit of force to break one of these. And there we go, explorers. Not only did we learn that plastic's a polymer, but we learned we can make plastics of our very own using milk. For more fun experiments in the lab, subscribe to Clayton's Exploration Station on YouTube and social media. And if you have any fun experiments for us to try, email us at info at explorationstation.net. Stay curious, explorers. Clayton's Exploration Station.